Hello, uh, I'm uh, Michael Clark. Uh, I'm a distinguished fellow at RUSI. Um, on 9-11 uh, in 2001, I was working at King's College and we all got the news uh, that was coming through during the day and most of us stopped what we were doing and were crowded around a television gossiping about what we thought the strategic effects would be. And the strategic effects have been quite considerable. I think the thing that's most important about 9-11 is that it, it marks not a, an era of change, but a change of era. Because the 20 years we've had since then has shown for, in my view, the first time in human history that terrorism has had an, a global strategic impact. Previously, we used to think of terrorism as just a rather unpleasant sidebar on great power politics. But I always think if I could have found Osama bin Laden uh, in a cave where we thought he would be in, say, 2006 and said, how do you think it's going, Osama? He would have said to me, it's going incredibly well. The attacks were better than I could have imagined. I've drawn the West into two wars, one in Afghanistan, one in Iraq, which has nothing to do with me in any case. Um, I have radicalized a whole generation of political Islam. I've created disquiet in the West. I've, I've moved forward in creating a clash of civilizations. And I've put the apostate states of the Middle East and the Gulf on the back foot. I think it's gone incredibly well. And I think I would have agreed and said, Osama, you are probably the most important terrorist in world history. And I think he would have nodded and said, yes, I am. Because the fact is that over the last 20 years, our defense and foreign policies have bent themselves out of shape in pursuing the expeditionary wars that this attack has, has led to. And let's face it, the strategic winners from the war in Iraq is Iran, and the strategic winner from the war in Afghanistan is about to be China. Now, those are not great strategic outcomes. Of course, we, could, we had to deal with the effects of 9-11 and the threat that Al-Qaeda posed, but we could have done it in different ways without uh, creating expeditionary wars in order to do so. And that I think is the, the key message I take from the last 20 years. But what does it mean for Britain? I mean, Britain was absolutely determined to stand right behind the United States as a result of the 9-11 attacks. Tony Blair was very clear about that. Alistair Campbell in his diaries makes it clear that on the night of 9-11, they talked about what they were pretty sure had happened and they were right. And they discussed what will we have to do now? And I think that decision, that instinctive decision to stand right behind the Americans was a decision that um, uh, John Major or Mrs. Thatcher would have taken, Churchill would have taken it. I think even Clement Attlee or James Callaghan, maybe even Harold Wilson would have taken it in similar circumstances. Standing behind the United States was the strategically sensible thing for Britain to do. But there were two problems. One was political, is that as the years went on, as those 20 years went on, um, as it were, standing behind the Bush administration got harder and harder. And the Obama administration, though, was different, but was no great friend of Britain. And then the Trump administration made Britain very, very uncomfortable. And so the idea that Britain was the, as it were, the bridge across the Atlantic uh, led us to a position where we were having to defend the indefensible far too often. And it didn't really work to our longer term uh, advantage, at least as far as we could see. And the second problem was a military one, that although we always convinced ourselves that because we are, we're America's 10% ally, you know, we put about 10% into defense compared to them, we get about 10% for it, and we give about 10% in alliances that we join in with the United States. And we think that that 10% gives us some strategic influence. Well, it didn't. It didn't give us any influence over what happened in Afghanistan, although we tried quite hard to gain some strategic influence. Didn't give us any influence over uh, events in Iraq. Didn't give us any influence over events in Libya. And as the years went on with the, the Bush, then the Obama, then the Trump administrations, it is clear that that military effort that Britain makes and makes to a pretty high order. I mean, it strains us to make that military effort. That wasn't giving us much strategic benefit. And the catastrophe of Afghanistan that we've seen played out in the last couple of months is the final nail in that coffin uh, that, that assumes that Britain has this strategic influence with the United States. Uh, we may have it again, but we haven't had it so far. So when we look back on this era, this 20 years, this era of change, what will we call it? Historians in 30, 40 years time, what will they call it? They might call it the era of 
hubris and humiliation, particularly talking about Britain, or they might call it the era of distraction. I guess if I was still a, a sort of celestial professor looking down in 30 or 40 years time, I suppose I might say it was the era in which the 21st century really caught up with Britain. So if you followed me this far, thanks for watching.